Good evening, and welcome to Creative Broadcasting. The sta- I am your host, Ashley Little. A little bit about my... corporate professional by day and entrepreneur by night, two-time best-selling author, host of Authors on the Rise, speaker, vice president of operations for DMV Mastermind, co-host of the Tammy Collins Marquee Radio Show, co-founder of Sweetheart Scholars Nonprofit, owner and creator of Creative Broadcasting, co-founder and owner of Talk Radio and TV Network, LL Muted, and um, Vice President of Sales and Marketing for Melanie People Magazine and Blogger and Media for Black Women Hustle. Today, I have a special guest. Her name is Iris Nicole Patterson. A little bit about her. Iris is an Inglewood native. She's a, is the CEO of Iris Bot- Bot- Botanicals, LLC. Iris Botanicals was bo- birthed in her kitchen in 2014 after she su- suffered a terrible case of tension of alopecia months before her wedding because of a careless removal of glued in hair extensions. The removal left her bald around her hairline. In great distress, Iris decided to do research on different methods to stimulate hair growth. In her research, she discovered many recipes using essential oils along with carrier oils to stimulate her active hair follicles and trigger full growth in just a year's time. Iris formulated a jar of hair food that's packed with seven powerful essential oils and proteins to help strengthen the hair shaft. The Rinjivating ren- Hair Butter was the first of her many recipes for the hair. Later, Iris created her, her full line of hair care essentials and named them Iris Botanicals. Since then, Iris Hair Care line can now be found in five Whole Foods locations and three independent retail stores. Iris Botanicals has helped it many women restore their hair, including both a cancer and lupus patient. It's Iris' plan to go nationwide soon. Iris is also the founder of Dreamers Academy, a small business consultant firm offering one-on-one coaching, workshops, and business essentials. She's also the co-founder of WFID Radio, an online talk radio station with a full lineup of business professionals offering insight on industry-specific subjects. Iris Nicole Patterson is a visionary thought leader of the millennial generation. It's her purpose to be the driving force to lead one to believe that anything's possible. She's a voice that encourages activation to someone that desires change and a thirst to follow their dreams. Iris has been featured in written articles like DNA Info and the Chicago Tribune, She's also been featured on WVON 1690, 106.3, 1390, and numerous radio shows. Welcome, welcome, Iris. How are you today? I'm wonderful. I'm wonderful. Thank you for that um, intro and everything. Oh, and it's WIFD Radio, just in case they're looking for it. And so. WIFD Radio. (laughs) (laughs) So tell so tell the listening audience a little bit more about yourself, Iris. Well, oh, my God. You know, um, first thing I want to um, say is entrepreneurship just happened to me. It wasn't something that I was, like, seeking out. Um, back when I lost my hair from um, this hair extension removal that was just went kind of crazy, it was a bad glowing removal, um, the shampoo girl, you know, she was very impatient when she was removing the tracks and she took my hair with it, you know, through that little, and it was pain, literally, it was pain, <laughs> emotional pain from having a receiving hairline and, like, physical pain because she had snatched the hair out the scalp. You know, outburst, um, something really amazing, like, Ashley, like, seriously amazing because... This is a totally different world for me coming from someone who got quit jobs a lot, you know, and on this journey of entrepreneurship, I've, what I've learned is that a real hardwired entrepreneurs find it very difficult to um, be stimulated 
by a desk job or some kind of routine job like that. You know, you're, you know, in search of something greater. And many times in the very beginning, you don't know what that is. And back in 2014, there wasn't an uprise in entrepreneurship. And so when I was desperately creating my uh, formulation because nothing on the market worked for me at that time, um, I didn't know that I was creating something um, that would, A, be able to help others because it was totally a singular mission. It was just all about Iris. It was a vanity <laughs> mission. You know, mm-hmm. I, all I wanted was my hair back. I didn't care nothing about creating no LLC, um, <laughs> getting this stuff patented and patented. Yes, yes. No, I, needed, I wanted something that I could mix together because it was months before my wedding and I was literally in my kitchen trying stuff. Blending mm-hmm. different oils and learning about different essential oils. And, you know, because when I contacted the stylist and showed her pictures, which is why I have pictures of my Facebook page, actually, Iris the mm-hmm. Tassel's Facebook page, um, you know, those pictures that I took, it was just strictly for that stylist to see, look what your shampoo girl did to me, wow. you know. And wow. so... Um, and what I learned in the midst of all of it mm-hmm. was that God was using me for something greater. Yes, yes. And what we had to look at was what, you know, even though that was a horrible situation, but that actually pushed you into your destiny, right? So it was meant for the shampoo. Oh, my goodness, up. it did. It did. <laughs> you know, I came from a family um, that says, you know, go to work and go to school and get, a, get that degree. You know, and and become that good lawyer, doctor. You know, um, entrepreneurship was very brand new to not only my family, but my friends, my church members. You Mm -hmm. know, nobody owned a business. Mm -hmm. And so it was very, um, they didn't get it in the beginning. They didn't get it. But when when I was, um, as I posted on social media, my before and after, photos, trying to send subliminal messages to that stylist because she was still styling people's hair and taking their hair out. Mm-hmm. And, you mm-hmm. know, I didn't know that was marketing. And then people started asking for my, um, you know, what I did. You know, what, what did you do for your hair? And so you start giving stuff away. Then you can't handle the cost of giving stuff away. And then you might sell. And then before you know it, like me, when I was, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a massage therapist by trade. And okay. so I was working on one of my clients. It was a year into this now. It was a hobby. It was a hobby. And so I asked him, I, I wanted some legal advice because I'm like, I, it looked like it's no turning back. Like I think, uh-huh. you know, I have something here. And I said to him, Jim, I, I think I have a business. This is as I'm doing his massage. And he was like, well, tell me more, you know, about it. And when I explained to him that, you know, I was, um, before I even had a website, I was selling stuff through my inbox. People was referring other people. He was like, yeah, you do have a business. And I'm like, what do I do now? I have no business knowledge, no business Mm -hmm. sense whatsoever. Have nobody in my network that I can ask about this thing. And he referred me to um, a small business academy, which was a small business accelerator. And here in Chicago, there is a great deal of um, small business accelerators that are popping up. And what I love most about it, um, because this really speaks to my situation, actually I had no time to go and enroll in a university, get a degree, you know, wait four years before I sell another jar, you know. And so... I only had uh, a matter of, really, I should have been in half this knowledge, you know, compared to, in the, you know, the stages that I was in at that time. You know, so I only spent 12 weeks. 12 weeks gave me the bare basics. At least I had some kind of, um, you know, something to work on, you know, work with, rather. And, you know, really, just really at this, at, after that, learn as you in it. Learn as you go, you know, because... You better get while the going is good. And, you know, um, it's just been like, 
a crazy but amazing journey. Days I want to cry, days I'm smiling, you know. So what, what are some strategies, I that you would give to someone who may be listening that's new to entrepreneurship that might not have this, like, that were just like you, that doesn't have the support or the knowledge, but, you know, they're determined to make it happen. So what would be some strategies you would give to someone that is in the same situation and maybe going through that right now? So I always tell people that I'm crazy enough to jump and learn how to find the string to the parachute on my way down. And mm-hmm. the reason why I'm that way is because I'm like the best way to learn anything is to just get your hands dirty and make a ton of mistakes and do it. When I, as I talk to, a, a, you know, so many clients, their biggest fear is failing. And I'm mm-hmm. like, why, you know, but me, I don't care about that. You know, I, first of all, there is no such thing as failing. You just learned mm-hmm. another way that something didn't work. You know, right. so it's really education. And mm-hmm. no one has to know. Nobody has to know. And especially in the world with social media where everybody's pretending. You know, so nobody <laughs> has to know that your yeah. business flopped, that you, you know, you didn't make that sale, that, you know, you wasn't prepared or, you know, but, you know, to be prepared next time, you know, on your sales pitch wasn't strong enough. But, you know, next time you'll be able to get the next person. Nobody has to know that. Now, what I also say is that's the most beautiful knowledge. People love real people that make mistakes. If you have it all together, it's really hard for me to root for you because I want somebody that's like me that's going to tell the raw life, oh my God, I almost put my resume into Indeed.com so somebody can find me and hire me because I'm sick of this. You know, because I've had many mm-hmm. days like that. And mm-hmm. so what mm-hmm. I want to tell that person is enjoy the ride. Be up. Yes. The down. Mm-hmm. Go for it. Leap. Why do you want to wait? Look back ten years and like, man, are you serious? They came out with the pantyhose with the rips in it. I had that idea like five years ago. Yeah, but it passed you by because you sat on it. Because no yes. matter what, God is yes. gonna use you yes. to get this out or use somebody else. So yes. you can be the one, you know, to have the courage to go and tell the world that this is actually fashion and then you're going to have a bunch of people to follow, or you can sit up here in your house saying, I think I'm going to look foolish saying that. Okay, mm-hmm. so somebody with a little bit more oomph and courage is going to do it for you, and you go see it on TV like, oh, my God, I knew I should have went after it. And you don't want to have that kind of regret. And so you can regret falling and skinning your knee, but the biggest regret is not doing it at all. I agree. I love everything that you said. And the, the mo- one thing things that stood out was enjoying the ride. A lot of us, you know, uh, want the end result, but we don't want to, we don't want the process. So we have to embrace the process and embrace the journey because the process is a, is a part of the journey and we can't get to that next level without enduring the process. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. You cannot. I mean, okay, what? You have all these billionaires. They started in their gar- uh, their garage and, you know, or they started in a home or, you know, they mortgaged their house like, um, you know, Ray Kroc. He mortgaged the house. <laughs> but he, his, his vision, well, that he stole, but lived on, you know what I'm saying? Right. And so, but he, he was a risk Taker. You know, before we had all of our definitions of what entrepreneurship is, the, 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 the definition that I remembered um, as a young girl when I read about it, they called them risk takers. And so you have to take the risk. You don't know how it's going to turn out, but you can make that the most exciting day of your life to find out how it would turn out. You know, so that's how I kind of process things. Um, I get a high. First of all, I get a, I, I'm addicted. I have an adrenaline rush. I'm addicted to starting a new, new projects. 
So I get an adrenaline rush when I try something new rather than fear. It's never fear. It's, it's excitement. And so I, all, what you will also know about entrepreneurs, you can tell the difference. Who's a real entrepreneur and who isn't because we get a high off new projects. We yes, don't run yes. from them. You know, yes. so, <laughs> you know you're hardwired <laughs> when that yes. happens. Yes, I definitely agree. That leads me to my next question for you. So I, you have created a full line of hair care essentials and named them Iris Botanical. Since then, your hair care line can now be found in five whole food locations and three independent retail stores. Iris Botanicals has helped many women restore their hair, including both cancer and lupus patients. So please tell the listening audience more about these awesome accomplishments and how one can reach them. So, yeah. Okay. So I got to update my bio, too, because now I'm in six Whole Foods and I'm awesome. in four, going into my fourth independent store, or actually fifth. So I'll... By the end of the month, I should be in 11 stores now um, total, and I'm still growing. And the first thing is um, one of my prayers was that I didn't have an overnight success because what I've learned, and I, and I um, actually learned it from, to com- I received confirmation from a dear friend, um, you know, Angela Grayson, who had an academy that grew overnight. She writes about it in her book. Um, grew overnight, literally, she landed a um, six-figure contract, and then, but within the within the year's time, it plummeted because she didn't know how to manage, a, you know, a business that size. And so, with me, um, one of the things that I did, first of all, research, research, research. That was the first thing. Um, I read everything I could. When I really, when I'm really about to just dive into something, I read every single thing that I could because my fear is my fear. Um, and this is it's not a bad thing, but it's just one of the things that I always fear is not having an answer when someone asks me a question about my product. Down to what does essential oil do? Why did you choose this essential oil? You know, like mm-hmm. Lang Lang came from a uh, Lang Lang essential oil came from a plant in Madagascar. I mean, nobody cares that it came from Madagascar. You know, but I know right. that. <laughs> you know, because I just want to know everything about everything that I'm using because every essential oil that I chose was, you know, basically intentional. My products are very intentional. The the products that I created was the very products that I used on myself in my process of restoring my hair over time. So <clears throat> that's why they don't smell like cucumber melon, and they smell like rosemary and peppermint and everything because that wasn't the case. Like, I wasn't one that stood in the kitchen and said, hmm, I think I want to own a business, and maybe I want to um, own a hair care line. No. I stood in my kitchen was like, Lord, I need my hair back. Will you help me regrow this thing? You know? And so my formulations came in the night. They are very – they came from heaven. It's, it's really God blessing me with – you know, with with these ingredients and how to put them together, you know, it's supernatural because I'm not a chemist, but I've helped lupus patients. I've helped cancer patients. I've helped, you know, some men with active hair follicles. And and it all came from me reading and researching and experimenting, reading, researching, experimenting, and it sounds just like a chemist. You know, but God mm-hmm. awakened me sometimes, you know, and give me formulations in the middle of the night when I can't go to sleep. And I'm like, oh, those blend amazingly. You know, I go, get to work, and then it works. You know, and it's, it's really like that. And I did not know that, Ashley, until um, I went to natural hair school. That was another thing. Um, I okay. wanted to study the hair fibers. Um, so I did go through a three-month um, academy, three, four-month academy, um, mm-hmm. and it was really for research, you know, and that was it. And then there I got confirmation that all of my formulations made sense. It's so, it's so crazy. And so um, one day after I graduated from the academy, the director um, um, in this Amazon Natural Look Academy here in Chicago, and the, the director, Nadra Smiley, she 
invited me back to teach a class on how to uh, make products. And here's the kicker. I sat on my couch after I agreed to it for about an hour and a half, and I could not think of one recipe to teach those people. <laughs> and I'm like, are you serious? You make this stuff all the time. No, I only have my recipes, and they wasn't getting that. You know, so right, right, I right. Said, I don't have a recipe. I literally had to Google something and just kind of play with it. Because I asked her, I said, well, what do you, you know, do you have a recipe you want me to kind of teach them? She said, no, you, you're the expert. And I'm like, mm. And then, but that, at that point, actually, um, and I, I'm glad that that happened. At that yes. point, I learned that, you know, how I was being used was supernatural. So to answer your question, God, that's really what happened to me. God happened to me. It was It's very supernatural how I come up with these recipes, and I have no um, real technical answer to give you, you know, as to how I created the formulations. And it's because of God that they work, you know, um, and, and that's that's the truth of it. That's awesome. You know, it has to be, you know, for you anybody that can, you know, create formulas in their head in the middle of the night, you know, you're, you're gifted, right? So you know that yeah. you're in your passion. So that, that is pretty mm-hmm. amazing, pretty amazing. And you're doing some awesome things. You also are the founder of Dreamers Academy, a small business consulting firm, offering one-on-one coaching, workshops, and business essentials. So tell us how you, um, you know, you have your hair care business, and now you actually founded a Dreamers Academy as well. So tell us how you transitioned over to do that and be able to balance all of it. Well, you know what? Um, I, it ha- really happened this way. Um, okay. As I began to grow my company, um, I began to continue to, like, build relationships. And I've had people over the years reach out to me, numerous amount of people to reach out to me and say, Iris, I have an idea. And so my initial response is, oh, my God, here's my phone number. No more inboxing. You know, and I get excited <laughs> when a new visionary has the courage to entertain their visions. And mm-hmm. I'm more excited about their product or, well, what they're trying to do probably than them. And I, um, and, and I didn't notice that until somebody said, you know what I really love about this conversation? I'm like, what? You don't make me feel stupid. All of my family members make me feel stupid and doubt me, but mm-hmm. you just gave me life. Like, I feel like I can do this. And I'm like, well, that's amazing. You know, but here's the thing, Ashley. Um, the reason why that was important to me, to be somebody's cheerleader, is because I didn't have one at the beginning. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. what I want to say to anybody that, you know, want to go after something, you may be the only one to see your vision first and for a long time. Yes, yes. But you have to stay dedicated to the vision. They're going to get on board. They will. Give them time. But don't focus on that. Focus on executing. And so yes. Dreamers Academy, well, is I create that because people need a community of people, like minds, that will mm-hmm. root for you. To even say, I want to try something new is courageous because there are so many people that stuck and it's out of fear. I, God, you know what, this thing with entrepreneurship, let me tell you right now, it's the, one of the hardest things that I've ever had to do outside of raising my daughter. And so because I was 16 and pregnant too. So mm-hmm. it was one of the hardest things I ever had to do. But the harder thing on top of that is trying to convince everybody you're not crazy. Mm-hmm. You know, trying mm-hmm. to get them to see the vision. But I can't spend time trying to convince you. Right. I have to spend time right. working on the vision. And, and mm-hmm. you'll get on board or you won't. And so my community, the first thing, is it turned into a group. It was a group, and what the group really was for people to connect with other people that are trying to do the same thing. Dreams Academy isn't a bunch of entrepreneurs. It's a bunch of visionaries that want to be entrepreneurs. And then it's a, it's a mixture of two. You have the mixture of those that are thinking about it but are going to become inspired by the people that's already doing it. 
And so when I started um, giving workshops based around the things that I didn't have when I was starting my business, you know, uh, and questions that weren't answered. And so I'm one, I want to give you all the information. I wanted you to be fully equipped. But what I did realize, Ashley, is that time is money. And I would spend two hours talking to somebody on the phone. Mm-hmm. And then, but mm-hmm. even though I poured into them and sold it to them, I was happy. But that was two hours. So I'm like, let me start doing consulting work because I actually enjoy it. So where somebody who started out with a natural hair care line, they can, you know, they may not understand, you know, that you need insurance before you go into a retail store. They may not understand how to get the proper label. They may not understand that you need NC codes on the back of your uh, bottles so people can read the common name of an ingredient and the Greek name of the ingredient in parentheses with a comma. You know, it's just so many different ways to be able to help somebody and answer so many questions when it comes to, you know, how to get from this phase to this phase. And so that's where Dreamers Academy came from. I love it. First, I want to say congratulations, and I just want to commend you for not giving up, right? Because, you know, some people that Thank go you. through that, that didn't have a cheerleader or support, you know, sometimes you get stuck and you get discouraged and you don't follow your dream. But I want to commend right. you for not doing that. And that you're a prime example of, you know, letting us know that sometimes you're not going to have that support, but you have to keep moving forward and stay focused and execute. We all going to go through that, that process where people are going to fall off, where people are not going to support us, right? Yeah. But if you're, if you're passionate about it, follow your dreams, and God will put the right people in your life that will help you get there. And if whoever that does not come with you, that means they were not meant to go. So I just, you know, reach back for you creating this space for creators to be creative and to follow their vision is awesome because we need that you know we do need Thank to be you. around like minded people you know that's important for us to get to the next level that's important for us to grow is to be around that because when you're trying to focus and execute and you um, also like you stated trying to make people believe in your dreams but we can't do that we got to stay focused whether they believe or not right because right everybody's right. journey is different so I would tell anybody Keep working. Don't quit. At the end of the day, no matter who's with you or not, don't quit because sometimes you might have to walk alone. Yes, yeah, true. That's true. You're absolutely right. And God will send you your tribe, and that's what I believe, and that's what happened. You know, with me, eventually I started meeting other people that are doing the same things I'm doing. And what we also find out with um, entrepreneurs, you may be the only entrepreneur in your immediate family, and that's hard because, mm-hmm. and I call them worker bees, the nine to fivers. And I'm like, worker bees see life through a different lens than an entrepreneur. And so they don't understand, you know, how you can work broke on your vision for a month mm-hmm. <laughs> waiting mm-hmm. for your yep. first sale. And they like, are you serious? And they would tell you regularly, go get a job. Because you'll be crying. Like, oh, my God. But the minute they say go get a job, like, are you serious? I didn't say I was stopping my vision. I'm just having a bad day. <laughs> <laughs> Let me cry, and then I'll get, I'm getting back to it. So you better go on somewhere with that. You know, and then that's really the conversation. But if you cry to another entrepreneur, they're going to be like, okay, you done? You know? <laughs> Let's get back to work. And that's really how I talk to my friends who be tears. Ashley, I ain't lying. Let me see. I didn't talk to, like, about six friends who burst into tears. But then the next day, you know what they doing? They right back at it, mixing uh, face cream, um, making meal prep meals. They're uh, making videos for the YouTube series, series and stuff like that. Right back at it the next day. And so that's what happens. Like, it ain't glamorous at all. You don't want to quit at least once a week. Yes. <laughs> in the very beginning stages, you know, and so, but yeah, and that's why that community was very important because what I needed them to know was you are not alone. We all wonder, are we crazy? Did we hear God right? You know? <laughs> so, 
Yes, yes. And I would tell anybody, because, you know, some of us have already transitioned over, like you full time, and some of us are still working corporate and, and are entrepreneurs, because I'm doing both. So I tell anybody, you know, you know, work hard, embrace it, take what you learn in corporate and put it towards your business. If you already transitioned mm-hmm. over, that's awesome, too. But do not give up. Do not quit. No. Is what I would tell anyone. Mm-hmm. So, Iris, what did failure teach you? Oh, my God. Do we have time? <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you something. Um, what, I, um, what I love most about this is that I met a new Iris. I learned things about myself I didn't even know. I have such strength that I didn't even know I had. I have resilience that I didn't even know I had. So what failure taught me was actually, Iris, you're dope. And that's not me gloating. You know, mm-hmm. it's me surprised, you know, and, and of how God really crafted me. And so what really, let me see. First of all, failure taught me that you can actually bounce back. You can bounce back. You can really get up after you've wallowed for about 10 minutes and get back to it refreshed and that it didn't kill you. You know, falling down did not kill me. What falling down taught me was that you're so strong. I had a conversation Mm -hmm. with myself last night, and this was the first time that I wasn't, like, robotic talking to myself, but I was really in my soul, talking, speaking life into myself. Because it's in the midst of, right now, um, sales are a little slow. They are. And so what I have to do, really, is go, it taught me failure, taught me how creative I am. Because when things, when sales are slow, you got to get really creative now. You know, right. you got to start, mm-hmm. you know, creating new marketing strategies. You got to start teaming up with people. You got to, mm-hmm. you know, reach and, and start collaborating, which is one of the things that we are so fearful of because you don't want folks to outshine you. But y'all can do so much more together collectively uh-huh. than you mm-hmm. can by yourself for a collaborative effort is amazing because this person might have an amazing following and you might have the amazing creativity and then you come together and both of y'all kick and tail. You know, so that's what failure taught me. It taught me how to be resourceful, how to get creative, how to, you know, how much drive I got, how that I can really take it. Like I can seriously take it. I didn't know that I can take it. You know, I'm like, oh, this is what this child feel like? Okay, it's not too bad, you know, but I can give, I can come up from here. And I so it, it just really teaches you, yes, that, you know, there is so much more to you mm-hmm. than you ever knew. Yes, and we got to look at it as, like you said, it's not failing. It's a lesson, right? And it's part yeah. of our process. It's part of our process, and it, it's necessary for us to be uncomfortable, and it's necessary for it to happen. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. It is. And it, it goes back to, actually, what I was saying, how I didn't want to grow overnight. Mm-hmm. Look at all the stuff you're going to miss. Look yeah. at all the lessons that are so valuable that you as the one entrepreneur and leader should be sharing with the others. But if you right. bypass all of that skipping grades, you're going to miss something. And I don't want to miss anything because when I get there to the top, I want to stay. I want right. to stay because now I know how to manage at each level. Mm-hmm. I know how to sustain. I know what this, what that view looks like. And, and, it's, mm-hmm. and, you know, and then I can rise to the occasion. But I can't rise to anything if I'm up here, you know, just as Iris, you know, basically what I'm saying is, you know, five figures, six figures, you know, five figure Iris is a totally different Iris, an inexperienced Iris than six figure Iris. 
And so I need, I need to learn some stuff along the way so when I get to six figure iris, I'll mm-hmm. be able to, you know, really take care of her and really take care of her business and be able to teach others and educate and, and still learn and absorb. You know, I'm secure because I'm knowledgeable, you know, so I, I wouldn't be able to stand tall in a room because I'm going to feel like I've missed so much and I don't know most of anything, you know, but I won't, but it'll be a different kind of iris. I love it. And, you know, failure keeps, keeps us humble, you know, and that's most oh, of all. Oh, big time. That's most big of all. So, you know, that, that's necessary because sometimes we, uh, we need that humbleness, you know. We need to always remember, you know, to never forget, you know, where we came from. So that's that's always important to always embrace that. So we talked about right. you know, what, yes, yes, mm-hmm. and we talked oh, about ahead. what failure taught you. So what did success teach you? You know what? But I want to touch on that the humility because failure and success that plays that that's on both sides of the fence. You know, humility okay. fits both places, and mm-hmm. so what failure failure taught me. You know, um, and and success, success. I'm actually a humble success on purpose because when I did mm-hmm. get cocky, God always checked me. And here's mm-hmm. the thing, <clears throat> I'm actually on a spiritual mission. It's more. It's not just me owning a business. It's a ministry. It's a ministry. Right. Um, mm-hmm. And so, and the reason why I said that is because how it happened, Ashley. Because I felt, I really felt like I was chosen. God smashed the hair out my head. You know, to get mm-hmm. my attention. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. I just, it just happened like that. And then he said, oh, here's some products. That's really what happened. No lies told. So because... The way it happened and the way he spoke to me and the way he gave me my products, I have to remain humble because it's not about me at all whatsoever. This is not about me. Because my husband said recently, you know, because you choosing to do this. I said, I promise you I'm not choosing to do this. I promise you. You know, because I went through a whole, girl, I went to, girl, I got mad at the business, wanted to sell it, put my resume in at uh, Allstate. Girl went through the whole interview process. They gave me the tour around the building and all this other stuff. Then I get a rejection letter. I'm like, are you serious? So I, it's not like I can go to work. You know, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know so it, it's more so I have to stick with the mission. And, if, yeah. and that means that I can't be cocky. And I cannot sit up here and say, oh, you know, girl, I'm better than you, blah, blah, blah. He will check me. And so mm-hmm. success also tells, you know, taught me to be a light for someone that is in darkness and to let mm-hmm. them know that you too can follow mm-hmm. your dreams and live out your visions and really, really honestly be successful at it. And so it just gave me a message. And so that's how I use this platform. Yes, and, you know, something that you said about, you know, God will get our attention. Yes, he will. He will get our attention for us to yes. always come back to give him the glory for everything that he's doing. Yes. And so the way he got your attention, not only did he get your attention, but he got your attention to push you into your destiny, right? So it's always yes, that's purpose true. for what he does. Yes. For what he does. Absolutely. So you have... You have all of these great things going on. I'm so excited for everything that you have going on, Iris. I know that I met you last year off of social media, and you have been knocking <laughs> it out since then. So what can we expect from you in the future? Well, you know what? Um, so my newest project, it's not really new. Actually, I've been kind of like sleeping on it, but I've been going really hard at it since um, I acquired a new business partner. And we're now, um, we've launched WIFDRadio.com, and I created that platform for entrepreneurs to come on. And I love people that have a lot to say of substance, a lot of mm-hmm. things of substance, mm-hmm. of course, but very little time to get that message out. And so what I've done was um, put together uh, just a list of personalities um, that are on our network that have messages of substance 
Um, and we are, you know, creating a platform for others to come on to do the same. And so WIFD actually, you know, Dreamers Academy turned into a podcast first. And what I missed was the interactions, um, like with the callers and stuff like that, to actually um, talk to people and answer their questions. And so um, I segued into, um, you know, just went ahead and just uh, bought into my own radio station. And um, right now we are really going full throttle with that because my coaching program um, and the workshops and all of that will segue people, those that really want to do public speaking and, uh, you know, have a really great platform to do it on, you know, I'm pushing those, well, offering those people um, a place to shine. And so that's really where all of this kind of comes together. And so right now, um, those are the things that I'm really working on. I was going to do an online academy, but I didn't want to take on too many projects. And like I said, I become addicted to new ideas and the <laughs> adrenaline attached. And so I yes. have to check myself sometimes because my mind goes a, mile, a million miles a minute, and I know that other entrepreneurs can kind of, like, relate to that, you know, <laughs> because we're yes. visionaries. We think of the ideas, yes, you know. <laughs> so, um, but, yeah, that's what I'm really working on. Uh, between the three of those things, I'm pretty busy. Well, I would like to congratulate you on all of the great things that are ahead. I cannot wait to see what all is going to be bursted out of you this year and this season. Thank you. I want to tell all of the listening audience, please, you know, support WIFD Radio. And thank you, thank you. for creating that space for entrepreneurs to get their message out because that's so important. And what we yes. do here at Creative Broadcasting and for my network, Talk Radio, we believe mm -hmm. in collaborating and supporting each other. So, yes, please go awesome. support her. Please go support her radio station. Please, if you need an opportunity, go reach out to her. We're all about supporting yes. her. We are better. We are better together. So, congratulations. Yes, we are. Yes. So, tell the listening audience how they can follow you, Iris, and how they can contact, contact you. Yeah, and so, you know what, you can follow me on Instagram, and it's Iris Botanicals all across the board on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and you can also go to irisbotanicals.com, and you can order online. I ship everywhere. I've shipped to even Switzerland, so I ship everywhere, you know, um, and check me out um, the restorative hair system, you know, that's the honey and olive oil conditioner and aloe coconut hair cleanser. That's um, everything is all natural, my rejuvenating hair and butter, and then my uh, rejuvenating hair serum all works together beautifully. And you can check out the tutorial video on my website, and you can go to Iris, Iris Botanicals' Facebook page and watch the full tutorial on how to use the products. Awesome. Please follow and support her. Please follow, check her website out, check her Instagram page, Facebook page, and purchase some products. So, awesome. Iris, I would like to give you are welcome. I would like to give you a special thing for taking the time out of your very, very busy schedule to give me the opportunity to interview you. I would like to say thank you, thank you so much, and many blessings to you this year. Oh, this was fun. This was absolutely fun. And I thank you for, you know, bringing me on. I actually, you know, trust my brand enough to highlight it on your show. So I really appreciate that. You are welcome. And I'm so excited to see what your brand is going to do. I know you have some great things in store that you probably shared and that you probably did not. But I can't wait. <laughs> I can't wait to see what is going to, how everything is going to be bursted this year for you. So, Jess, many blessings to you, and thank you again. Thank you. You are welcome. So I would like to give a special thanks to two of my mentors, Tammy Collins Marquis and John Schamberger. I also would like to give a special thanks to Dr. Larry White Sr. and author Kimberly McLemore. You may follow me on Facebook at Ashley Little and on Instagram at underscore Ashley A. Little. Thank you. Unmuted. <laughs>